B'Shem Hashem Na'asem and Asliach. Welcome everybody to our weekly shiur on the Zera Shimshon, uh, on the parsha with the Zera Shimshon. Uh, this week's parasha is Parashat Behar, and we are doing um, Ot Dalid, the fourth ma'amar of the Zera Shimshon on this week's parasha. Uh, today's shiur is dedicated to Leilu Nishmat Mahbube Esther Bat David. And um, also Nisan Haim Ben Helen, Yafa Bat Bibijan. And Rafael ben Monavar, and Binyamin ben uh, Yaakov ben Binyamin. So the Gemara in so the, uh, the Zera Shimshon starts off. Oh, and oh, so I almost forgot. Also, Leilu Nishmat the Zera Shimshon himself, may his neshama have an aliyah through our learning and bring us all of the brachot that he uh, promises. The Zera Shimshon starts with a Gemara. In Baba Batra, the Gemara says as follows. This is Baba Batra Yud Amur Aleph. It says, "My dichtiv, what does the pasuk mean when it says this is a pasuk in Mishlei Yud Tet? It says, Malve Hashem Chonel Dal, meaning a person that this is what the pasuk actually means. Means a person that gives money." Or helps the aniyim, the those that are poverty stricken, those that need money, those that are uh, down on their luck, and he gives them tzedakah. It is as if he is actually giving money to Hashem. He's lending money to God. Malve Hashem chonendal, meaning malve Hashem chonendal. Who is a person that gives money to Hashem? Who is the person that lends money to Hashem? It's the person that helps Aniim. A person that helps the poor, gives them tzedakah, helps them out in any way possible, is as if he's giving money to Hashem. But the word malveh, let's keep this in mind, malveh means to lend. Right? So it's basically saying, the person that helps the poor is lending money to Hashem. What happens when you lend money? Right. Yeah, you have to, you're going to have to get it back. Right? The, the, you're the lender. The borrower needs to give you the, the money back. So here the pasuk is basically making Hashem the person that has borrowed money from you. Because you give money to an ani. Amar Rabbi Yochanan, Rabbi Yochanan says, this is still the Gemara, Amar Rabbi Yochanan, in Malem Mikra Katuv, there's not so many times that you hear one of the Tanaim or the Amoraim in the Gemara say such a thing. It says, if this Pasuk was not written, if such a thing was not written by King Solomon in Mishlei, Iyef Shar Omro, you would not be allowed to say such a thing. Meaning the tan- what, what Rabbi Yochanan is saying is that this is above and beyond unbelievable. The fact that a person could say he's lending money to God is not something that anyone can say. Meaning, if Shlomo HaMelech had not said it, who dared would say such a thing? We wouldn't say such a thing. Meaning Rabbi Yochanan is trying to make you understand what a valuable pasuk this is and how much value it has. The fact that a person gives money to tzedakah, it's like you're lending Hashem money. You're helping God out. How could someone say such a thing? Only Shlomo HaMelech, Moshe Rabbeinu, there are certain people in history that were allowed to say certain, certain things that we say in the tefillah, for instance, the Amidah. Right? When we say certain pasukim in the Amidah, in the Lachash that we say, a lot of those things in the beginning of Lachash were said by Moshe Rabbeinu. And the Gemara also says, if Moshe Rabbeinu had not said these words, had not referred to God by these terminologies, we would not be allowed to refer to God in these terms either. We're only allowed to do so because Moshe Rabbeinu did. Because anything we say would only limit God. We're not allowed to. If Moshe Rabbeinu said, Gibor, we can say Gibor. Right? So on and so forth. So it's a very big deal what Rabbi Yochanan is saying. Chaim everybody. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Shehakol Nihya Bidvaro. How you like I chug down vodka like that? Can you do it? And I can talk right afterwards. It's like nothing. Eh, it's like water. 
So it says. So he continues. Kivyachol, it's as if to say, Eved love leish malve. Sorry, one second. If Charlotte Omro. It's as if saying you're making Hakadosh Baruch Hu a Chas V'Shalom Kav Yachol, as if to say you're making Hakadosh Baruch Hu like a servant to the person that has given tzedakah. Meaning you've just made God someone that, that is needy. He needed to borrow money from you and you gave it to him. It's like an Eved, it's like a servant that is borrowing money from you. So he says, Yesh Ledaktek, we have to understand it should have actually said, if that's what the Pasuk really means, right? It should have said, He who gives money or helps Aniyim, those in need, Malve Hashem. It's as if he is lending money to God. But the Pasuk in the Mishle is the opposite way. It says, Malve Hashem Khonendal. Who is a person that lends money to God? It's the person that helps the needy. Why don't you just say, he who helps the needy is like giving, lending money to God. That, should have been, that would have been much easier in any language. Look, how would you say it? How would you say... You're right, okay, no problem. That might make more sense that way. Like, the way you speak right like when you read the Pasuk, if you would have read this Pasuk on your own, you would not have translated it the way we translated it. You don't know where to put the commas, you wouldn't have translated. You say, Malve Hashem Khonendal. It's like, it's as if saying, you, it, you would, you, you're supposed to put the verb at the end. Khonendal Malve Hashem. A person that helps the needy is as if he is giving money to Hashem. The one who, who is the one who gives money to Hashem? The Khonendal, he who helps the, it's like, you know. Why is it that it's saying Malve Hashem before Khonandal? He who gives money to God is a person that helps the needy. It doesn't sound so fluid. It's not how the language works. Even in Hebrew, that's not how it should be written. It's not natural. Right? So here, listen to this. Vitorat, in order to answer this, like, like always, we kind of go into like a small little intro about something else and we connect it and we try to answer it. But so far, I just want to make sure, is everyone following? Yes? Like, pretty simple? Okay. My Damrim Rabbi Gemara Hatam, the same Gemara later on in Tet Amud Bet says, Huh? The Gemara is in um, Baba Batra. Amar Rabbi Yitzchak. Rabbi Yitzchak says, My dichtiv, what is, the, what is the meaning of the Pasuk in Mishlei Chaf Aleph, Chaf Aleph? Rodef sedaga v'chesed yimsa hayim. And the rest of the Pasuk is sedaga v'chavod. He who runs after tzedakah, he who runs after righteousness to help to give tzedakah, and chesed, and do chesed, yimtza chayim, will find life. And, the rest of the pasuk is, tzedakah v'chavod, and tzedakah and honor. So, from the way this pasuk is written, it seems as if it says, a person that runs after and chases in order to give tzedakah, will end up needing tzedakah. Listen to what the Pasuk says once again. Rodef chesed. He who runs after the opportunity to give tzedakah and do chesed, Yimsa Chaim will find life of tzedakah, of charity and honor. They don't even go together. What? He helps people out, therefore he's going to be on the needing end at one point that he'll also need tzedakah. That's, that's, that's what it translates as. Well, that's not how... 
Literally, that's not what the Pasuk means. Literally, that's not how it reads. And that's what the Zerah Shimshon is saying. Vechi, are you telling me Mishum derodef tzedakah? Because this person runs after tzedakah in order to be able to give tzedakah with all of his might. Yimtza tzedakah? He's gonna find, in, he, he'll find himself in a situation of tzedakah, meaning needing tzedakah. Meaning, has v'shalom, we're saying the person would be punished. Now he's on the needing end. Why? Ella, Ella, really, we have to read the pasuk in a different way. The pasuk is trying to tell us, shekol harodef tzedakah, Anyone, what the Pasuk is really trying to say is, anyone that chases after the opportunity to give tzedakah, and he wants to do it with all of his heart to help Aniyim, Shakadosh Baruch Hu Mamtsi Lo Maot, HaKadosh Baruch Hu will arrange for that person to have money, Lasot Mehem Tzedakah, in order to give tzedakah from that money. If Hashem sees that a person tries to give tzedakah and help anim out or help people out of tough situations, HaKadosh Baruch Hu helps that person receive money in order to do that tzedakah with that money. This is a very jam-packed subject, by the way. We'll try to kind of scratch the surface a little bit. So he, to explain this a little further, this is from Mishle, right. Now, to explain this further, it's talking about somebody that has an opportunity to give tzedakah. He wants to help a situation out, but he doesn't have the money. He doesn't have that kind of money. And he runs after other people to get money from them to help this situation. That's also a form of tzedakah, right? There's a lot of people that, you know, Rahman al in Eretz Israel, they don't have parents and they get married. They don't have money for their wedding. They don't have money for their dowry. So people go and collect money for them in order to arrange for them to have weddings or arrange for them for different things. So this person maybe cannot do it from his own money, but he's going after other people to give tzedakah to help. So it says the pasuk, maftichu pasuk. This pasuk is giving a guarantee that HaKadosh Baruch Hu will find that money and arrange that money for him. This is from the Maharsha. The Maharsha says HaKadosh Baruch Hu will arrange that that person, if they're from the bottom of their heart, they really want to be in the situation of helping somebody out, Hashem will make, it, make them able to be able to do it on their own. To be able to help out. Somebody comes up to you and says, listen, they really need money for X, Y, Z. You don't have money right now to do it. The Basuk is saying, Shlomo HaMelech and Mishle is saying, quite simply, if you really, really want to from the bottom of your heart to help this person out, to help the situation out, to help that organization out, to help that Ani out, HaKadosh Baruch Hu will give you the money to do so. It won't come from your pocket. It's a big guarantee. That's a huge guarantee. Right? It's, it's, it's free money. And then what if you're a rich person like you said, I don't All the more so? Well, specific... well, all the more so, and you still have your sakhar. But this is going the extra mile. Saying you don't have to be rich extra in order... Extra protect a poor person like this. What? Extra to protect a poor person like this. Right, right, in a sense. Hashem is saying, even if you don't have it, doesn't mean that you don't have the mitzvah of tzedakah. You will also have the opportunity if you really, really want to. That's what Shalom Amalek is saying. So he says... Yeah. What if you cheated to get that money? Like, what if you weren't honest? Well, if you're not honest, that's not... you use that money for tzedakah. That's, that's dirty money. Literally. If you're, not on, if you're stealing to do... It's like any other mitzvah. Right? You, 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 you steal money to do a mitzvah. It's called mitzvah ba'al avera. You, you've done a mitzvah through doing an avera. Which unfortunately, it's not just, a, uh, it's not just for uh, mitzvot that have to do with money. A lot of times, a lot of times unfortunately, we make the mistake of, 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 of trampling upon other people in order to do a mitzvah, because we want to do a mitzvah. You know? And, and the prime example of it, like a... Like a... Uh, to give you like a visual effect of it, we, we see this all the time. So it's, uh, it's quite easy to relate to. 
you know, the Sefer Torah comes out, everyone wants to kiss the Sefer Torah. But how many times have we kind of like trampled other people to get to the Sefer Torah? You know what I mean? It's like, oh, please, oh, you know, we jump, we kick, where, you know, you got shoe marks on the guy's forehead, but at least he kicked, you know, he kissed the mezuzah, right? That, 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 that happened to me, by the way. Um, this is not to blame anybody, it was just a situation. Hasbi Shalom. It just goes to show, by the way, how much we love, how much Am Yisrael loves to be in a spiritual state of kissing a Sefer Torah or whatnot. I was, I was going on a, on, a, on a tour one day to, um, in Eretz Yisrael, I was going on a tour to, to Ma'arat HaMachpala, right? The grave site of the patriarchs and the matriarchs. And this was one of those days that a lot of people from all over the world were going there. Right, so there was buses loading every day. I mean, I mean not every day, like the whole day, buses loading from the morning. One bus goes, another bus comes, and everyone's like in line, like pushing to get on the next bus, get on the next bus. I kid you not, I had a shoe mark on the back of my jacket right here. On top, I don't even know how it got there. I, when I tell you, like people were walking on each other. I, I'm not joking. It happened. <laughs> so like, it, it does happen. You know, when we want to do a mitzvah, we push for it. But it's not necessarily correct thing to do. It's not the right thing to do. Right? I was in that line for like an hour. I was, I was like, supposed to be on the first bus, I got like the 15th bus. So I was just standing there until... It was a funny story, actually. This lady had seen me the whole time, and she felt so bad for me, she just pushed me in. <laughs> like, ah, no! I'm like, okay. <laughs> it was like one of those cute mama moments in Israel when you feel at home. Yeah. At that moment, I felt at home. When this lady literally came to the bus driver, she's like, this Gingy's been waiting here the whole day. And everyone's like, get on already. It was like, when I'm like, thank you, mommy. <laughs> you know? So, seriously, I mean, I, I, I think other than my own home, it's the only place that I've ever felt at, at home everywhere was Eretz Yisrael, and I'm sure everybody has that feeling, you know, you, you kind of, you're home, it's, it's home, what can I say, you know, with, uh, with all of its, you know, things, it's, it's, it's home, it's home, it's beautiful in every single way. Huh? Nag! Exactly, I love that, just hearing that sound. Or like, where else in the world do people clap for a bus driver? You know, or where else in the world would you be on a bus at 11 o'clock at night and the guy's got techno music on? A city bus. Okay? Only in Israel. It's just love. It's just, just awesomeness. It's true awesomeness. So. So we said HaKadosh Baruch Hu is basically Hashem gives, them, gives the person money in order to do the tzedakah. And because of this, the pasuk meant to be written the way it was. We said, why does it say, Malve Hashem Chonendal? It should say, Chonendal Malve Hashem. A person that helps the poor is like he's giving, you know, uh, it should say, Chonendal Malve Hashem. A person that helps the poor is like lending to Hashem. But it says, Malve Hashem. Who's the one who lends to Hashem? So why? The, the pasuk says, why does it say Malva Hashem first? Kelomar Hakadosh Baruchu Yalve, because Hashem first comes and what? Lends the money Lemi Shechonendal to the person that wants to help the needy. If you're really running after the money, Hashem is going to make it possible for you to find that money. Shemamtilo Hakadosh Baruchu will find a way for the person to get money Kedeshe Chonendal in order for that person to be help to be able to. To help the downrotten and the poor. And even with the tzedakah that he does, he's really doing it. Now we're saying that now that the tzedakah that he does, whose money is he doing it with? Hashem's money. Because now we're saying the Pasuk is actually saying a person that wants to help the needy really wants them, doesn't really have that money. Hashem gives them extra money for that situation. So now, you're not really using your own money. You're using Hashem's money. 
It's not coming from your account. It's coming from the Hashem's account. Mikol makom. Even with that, the rest of the pasuk in Mishlei says what? Ugmulo yeshalem lo. And Hashem will pay him back. So let's see what just happened. The person doesn't have money to help the poor. Hashem gives him the money to help the poor. And when he uses Hashem's money, or she uses Hashem's money to help the poor, Hashem gives him back money for it. Gives him the sakhar for it. How crazy is that? Do you understand? To begin with, you didn't use your money to give tzedakah. I gave you money to give tzedakah, and guess what? Now I'll pay you, because you used money to give tzedakah. That's the value of giving tzedakah. And there's many other opportunities as well. I've always said, we Jews, those that practice Torah Judaism, we spend a lot of money on mitzvot. A lot of money on mitzvot. Think about it. Think about it. We just went through Pesach. Need I say more? Right? You're buying bread, pita bread, three bags for a dollar, two bags for a dollar, whatever it is. All of a sudden, Pesach comes, $25 for a pound of matzah. $25, right? For the good stuff. For the round handmade matzahs, which technically you must use for the night of the seder. You can't use. Now, most of us, Baruch Hashem, our seder table may always be filled with guests. Amen. We always have guests, we're with family. So one or two boxes don't do. So you figure, I'll go to Costco. $18 a box. Right? Which was out this year for many, many times that I checked. It was out, I wasn't able to get. So whoever took those last boxes, yeah. So (laughs) even $18 a box, that's a lot. Right? So you're buying 10, 15 boxes of those matzahs if you have guests. It's a lot of money just on the matzah. Then, all the kosher for Passover food. Like, it goes up. You buy ketchup, because this ketchup doesn't have corn syrup or whatever it is. Ketchup is $1.99. This ketchup is, I don't know, $5.99, $6.99, whatever it is. It's, it's, it's a lot. We spend a lot of money on mitzvot, keeping the mitzvot. Comes Sukkot time. Right? Lulav and etrog. You buy a citrus fruit. Which, by the way, I found at Smart and Final a week later for like a dollar each. Okay? I took pictures of it. They had all different forms of non kosher etrogim that are talked about in the Mishnah. They had it. It was the coolest thing. I never knew such things even exist. You know, there's one of them. If you look in the, if you look in the books that have halachot of etrogim, they have pictures of different etrogs that are not kosher. One of them has literally five fingers. It's an etrog. It's like this. Literally like this. I thought like, that's weird. It never happened. It was that smart and funny. It was for Halloween. And they called it like freaky fruit for Halloween. It was all mutated etrogs on one table. And I figured maybe, I don't know. Maybe Hayim, who was here from Eretz Israel selling etrogim. He couldn't sell these <laughs> to the non-kosher ones. He sold it to uh, some guy who got smart. And then, you know, smart and finance. Like, I got you Halloween. I have Halloween for you. Good price. Halloween citrus. Got you. You know, I don't doubt it for a second. That's probably what happened. That's the story we're going to go with. Right? So, we pay how much? How much did you pay Josh this year for, for etrogin? If you don't want to say don't say, I'm saying like... $200. You want a mehudar set? With a mehudar lulav that comes from Eretz Israel, all packed and beautiful and all stuck together, no chashash. You want to get the chazonish through and through and like the bet yourself and everything. $200, easy. For what? For a stick, citrus food, fruit, and some myrtle, and what's the other one called? Myrtle and hyssop, right? I don't know, I'm mixing up the names, don't quote me on this, please, please do not, <laughs> do not comment, it's embarrassing, if I get that wrong. Um, Willow, thank you so much, thank you. So, that, we pay hundreds of dollars, literally a day later, it just becomes jam, okay? 
and so on and so forth. You do a brit milah, you do a bar mitzvah, you know, $1,200, a good pair of tefillin, you know. And I always say, like, how, how is it that we have all these, and then Jewish school, Baruch Hashem, right? Ever think, like, and then you get these, now we're, the, we're talking about it, you get these ads from, like, Smart and Final, or, like, Sprouts and stuff like that, coupons and stuff, you go through it, meet, like, 99 cents for 10 pounds. I'm kidding. But I'm just, it's 99 cents a pound. It's like, chicken is like, chicken right now, you, you know, you know what's happening with kosher chicken. They're on strike. They're all literally making themselves non-kosher. They're like plucking their old feathers or whatever it is. I'm kidding. But like, there's, there's a shortage of kosher chicken out there. Now, chicken, right now, God knows how much it is in the Jewish market, but like, in a regular market, doesn't cost much. So I always had this like, thing, like, look, other people aren't paying as much as we are for food, for restaurants, being glad kosher restaurants. They don't have all these mitzvot that they have to pay for. They don't send their kids to Jewish school, right? However much discount we get, or scholarships, however much we might need for, from the schools. At the end of the day, it's money. What do we, how's it, how's it, how are we doing it? And they still... They still are sometimes, they still struggle with the less of the cost of the living that they have. They still, how? I'll tell you how. This is the concept. The concept is Hakadosh Baruch Hu says, when you want to do the mitzvot, when you pay for the mitzvot, you're not paying with your own money. You think it's your money, it's not your money. Every Friday night table, every Shabbat lunch table that you set is not from your money. You think it's from your account. It's not. Every Rosh Hashanah table that you get, that you get, you know, tongue for like $50 an ounce. Right? Now that's a tongue. You go to the counter and you go, may I have your golden tongue, please? Is that meat? Oh no! <laughs> we don't do meat on Rosh Hashanah. Gold. Please. But like, it's expensive. Not much expensive. But this is the concept. How do we do it? HaKadosh Baruch Hu says, if, if the cost of doing the mitzvot is high, I'm paying for it. It doesn't come from your account. That's why it's so important. Rabbi Vadia Yosef's daughter, Rabbi Vadia Zatzal, uh, I heard an interview from his daughter. She should be well. She's a, she's a rabbanit, like a legit rabbanit. She was having an interview, and she was talking about how poor they were when they were kids. Right? I mean, Rabbi Vadi Yosef, even though he was like the chief rabbi of Israel to the last day he lived, Rishon LeZion, and revered all over the world, Baruch Hashem, he was able to have a comfortable life, you know, his older age. But when he was younger, even when he was doing all the shurim and stuff like that, you know, having all the kids at home, he, they were very, very poor. Right? She was talking about how they had to sit with blankets on Friday nights because of the freezing cold, they had no heat. Right? So she said that on Chagim, right before Yom Tov, she knew it was a perfect time. Because she knew Abba used to say, go buy new clothes, whatever you need to buy, do it Lichvod Yom Tov. And when they would ask why, Rav Avadia would say, it doesn't come from our account. HaKadosh Baruch Hu pays for it. When you're doing it, Lichvod Yom Tov, you need new clothes for Yom Tov, you need new... Do it. HaKadosh Baruch Hu pays for it. Baruch Hashem. Did they not survive? Did they... Miraculously it works out. You're not going to see your bank account. You're not going to pay $200 and then go look in your bank account and go, hey, it's not even showing up in my account. That's not what happens. But the money has barakha. You don't notice it, but somehow it's like, it doesn't really affect you. Shabbats. Whenever we go shopping, it's so important. When you're shopping for Shabbat, every little thing you take, you go lichvot Shabbat Kodesh. Buying this for kavod of Shabbat. You... Right. Uh, and, and, and we still get sechar for it. He's paying for it. That's what the Zerah Shemishon is saying. Hashem is paying for it and we still get rewarded for it. Even though we're not even using our own money. How much more so when we're helping a brother in need? How much more so when we're helping an ani that really needs the help? And I learned this from my father, Allah Shalom. I don't remember a single time 
Not a single time, Mamash, I don't remember a single time, an Ani, someone that was poor, didn't matter, Jewish, not Jewish, didn't, didn't matter, that asked for money, and my father said no. Remember, as growing up, never. It never happened. It just never happened. As a child, I remember six, seven years old, when he would, he would take me to his store shopping, or whatever it was, when we would see Aniyam on the street, he would give me coins, and we'd be like, okay, go give this to him. Go give this to him. You know, several times. Right? Malve Hashem Chonendal. When you help poor, Hashem, Hashem looks at it as if you're giving him money, and then he returns money to you as if he just loaned money from you. But he didn't. He's actually the one who gave the money in the first place. And he's still repaying you. Omikol Magom, Yes, yes. So, uh, you said that he pays back the loan, but at what point did you say that he takes care of all your expenses? That's how he pays back, pays back a loan, meaning... So he pays back with interest? Because if he's, like, let's say I, I borrow $100 to give to a poor person. And, uh, and then, you know, if you give me back the loan, or you give me more opportunities to do sadaqa, it doesn't necessarily, like, I, I agree with the concept, obviously. But I'm just saying, where do you see it from that pursuit that that means that all your expenses are going to be take, taken care of as well? Because of the way that the pasuk is written. Instead of saying, Khonendal malve Hashem, it says, malve Hashem Khonendal. So it could be also be read in a different way. Meaning, before you're even Khonendal, before you even help the needy, malve Hashem. Hashem provides. It's from his account, it's not from your account. That's how he explained the way the Pasuk is written. Yeah? Does this apply to giving money to non Jews? Um, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe we'll research it afterwards. Mikol Makom. So even though the Pasuk has come, to let us know that HaKadosh Baruch Hu will provide the money for us to be able to give the tzedakah. It should have really said, instead of saying Malve Hashem, it should have said Mamtsi Hashem. Hashem will provide or Hashem will make it easy for you to find the money. Why does it say Malve Hashem? As if to say like, we're loaning Hashem money. Or Hashem loans money. Just say Mamtsi Hashem. Hashem will provide or Hashem will... will Find for you the money to help. Right? So now we're digging a little deeper in the Pasuk. We explained what the Pasuk means, that Hashem really provides money for us. What Malve Hashem Chonendal means, Hashem provides money for us to help the needy. But it says, in that sense, it should say, Mamtsi Hashem. Hashem provides money. Malve is, is, is terminology that's used for loaning, not giving or, or providing. The fact that the Pasuk says Malva Hashem Mashma Nami, it seems also, it's as if the Kivyachol Ve'eved Lovele Ish Malve. We're still kind of saying that Hashem kind of becomes our servant. It should have said in a different way. In this way, it seems that we're saying, yeah, because I give tzedakah, you know, I'm loaning God money. He owe me. Right? So it still sounds like that. Even if we want to explain it the way we did, we should, it should, the Pashtuk really should say Mamsi, not Malve. So he says, Bah! Barer, even though that it was clear, Sheesh Gam Lavi Ma Pasu Shalosh Baruchu Mamsi Maot, that Hakadosh Baruchu finds money for us or provides money because we want to give Sadaka Avil Aval Lefi Peshutan Shel Levarim. But in the regular, simple meaning of the Gemara, of the Pasuk, It still becomes a question as to why say malve. Hold on. Okay, this is this is the stuff we just said outside. Right, we said, we said this outside. Now he's bringing the examples of lulav and other mitzvot that we do that HaKadosh Baruch Hu repays us. <clears throat> it's interesting that he doesn't quote the Gemara and Beitzah. 
ומסכת יום טוב, אין מסכת יום טוב, ביצה ט"ז עמוד א', it says, כל מזונותיו של אדם, all the living expensive of a person, oh, expensive, expenses of a person, קצובים לו מראש השנה לראש השנה. are decreed for that person from Rosh Hashanah to Rosh Hashanah. Is that what you're referring to? Hazak Baruch, you were zocher to quote the Zerah Shimshon's next line. See? You're, you're in tune with... So every year, HaKadosh Baruch Hu decrees how much money a person is supposed to make every year. Right? Every Rosh Hashanah. Chutz, except for what? Mehutza'at Shabbatot ve'yamim tovim. Accept the money that he's going to spend for Shabbat and Yom Tov. That's where it comes from. Meaning, Hashem says, this year, you're all, we are all, Bezrat Hashem, this year are supposed to make one million dollars. Amen? Amen. amen. You want an amen, you gotta go higher than that. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you want an amen, you gotta go higher than that. Sorry, I didn't know I'm dealing with GQ millionaires over here. <laughs> But, so, Rosh Hashanah and Rosh Hashanah, everybody is, it's katsuv, it's set. HaKadosh Baruch Hu says, you're going to get $50 million this year. You're going to make $50 million. Amen. Amen ve amen lekulanu bezrat Hashem. Beshalom. However, that does not include Shabbat and Yamim Tovim. Which means what? That doesn't count in the $50 million. I got that covered. You spend money for Shabbat, you just bought a new suit for Shabbat, you, want, you really wanted to wear it for Shabbat, Lichvot Shabbat Kodesh, you got it. Doesn't come off your $50 million. You want, you're, 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 you bought the expensive liquor? No, I shouldn't have said it that way. <laughs> you bought the expensive liquor. Okay? <laughs> it doesn't come out of the ground. You want a blue labor for Shabbat? Yes, I do. Lichvot Shabbat Kodesh? You got it. Right? That's how I get away with things when I go shopping with my wife. <laughs> right? She goes, you paid how much for that? I go, Lichvot Shabbat Kodesh. She goes, It's Sunday. <laughs> yeah, like yeah, next Shabbat, next time I'm waiting. We're, we're gonna save it. <laughs> It's like Lichvod Yom Tov. What Yom Tov? It's like six months. Or, yes, six months. Or, <laughs> you know. <laughs> or bechutz and does not include. I'm not making this up. This is from the Gemara in Betza. Mehutzaat banav letalmud Torah. A person that puts their kids to Talmud Torah to learn Torah. Jewish school doesn't come from your account. This is the phenomena that as a young kid I always used to think about. Listen, this family sends their kids to public school, this family sends their kids to Jewish school. How is it that this family and this family both have pretty much the same vacation? Pretty much. How does it work out? It's very simple. HaKadosh Baruch Hu says, I have given you a mitzvah in the Torah, v'shinantam levanecha, you shall teach your kids Torah. Now, you can do it the easy way, you can do it the hard way. Either way, I'm paying for the school. It comes from my account. It's not, it's not, it's not going to be a loss for you. You don't want to pay for the school, so you won't have that money to pay for the school. And then God forbid, unfortunately, in some cases, what happens to be, Later on in life, we should never know. There's a lot, a lot of other things that have to pay for, God forbid, because the kids didn't go to Jewish school. You know how many of those cases I know about? You know, the kids, kids get completely ruined and destroyed in public schools, and then later on, to fix it, oh, rehab, this, that, and the heartache. And, you know, I'm not saying Jewish school is a fix up, fixer-upper for everything. That's not what we're saying. But believe me, Believe me, it's the best we got. It's better than the other choices and the options out there. Shame Hosif Mosifinlo. The more the person spends on these things, the more that Kadosh Baruch Hu says, okay, it costs you more, I'll give you more. It costs you more, I'll give you more. Bekashe. Over here we're seeing that Hashem is really called the lender, not the borrower. He's the one who's saying, in Betza we're saying Hashem is the lender. He's not the malveh, he's the loveh. Which is it? Mishle says Hashem becomes like a borrower from us. 
In Gemara Betzah it says, Hashem is the loveh, He's the lender. He gives us money so that we can spend for these things. So now listen to where he goes with this one. And we'll end off. He says, <clears throat> Hold on. Um, okay, oh, sorry, sorry. This is the second subject now. We finished the first subject, the answer of what it means, why, why the Pasuk says, Malveh Hashem Chonendal. Why does it say Malveh Hashem before Chonendal? It's because literally when we are giving money to Aniim, it's like we're giving money to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. How so? He works it out in two ways. One way, he's really the one who's providing the money for us to give. But he looks at it as if we're the ones who are giving, therefore he repays us again for the money that we spent. That's one thing. Then he asks another thing. And kind of like an interesting side question that he asks. He says... Um, he says, he says, we know that Akadosh Baruch Hu, all the mitzvot that are in the Torah that Hashem gives us, so to speak, Hashem also keeps these mitzvot. Meaning, any rules or regulations that Akadosh Baruch Hu makes for Bnei Israel, he goes by the same guidelines. Some of them do not really apply to him, you know, like carrying on Shabbat. I mean, he's not, he doesn't carry, you know, or uh, you know what I mean. These things, it's like kind of like metaphorical. But any mitzvah that would be able to somehow apply to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, he would go according to the same guidelines as he has given us. Right? You can't do something that you have said that we're not allowed to do. Clear? So he says like this. He says, now if we're saying this way, right? Hashem, you, you kind of pointed this out a little bit, maybe by accident. That's why I was like, eh, you were kind of, it would have been two for two that was like, whoo. Says, isn't this like Hakadosh Baruch Hu is paying rebit? He's paying interest. You said, did you, did you actually mean that? Okay, so two for two. Josh got two for two. Gabe, you're still zero. <laughs> so it's like Hashem is literally giving interest, and we're not allowed to pay interest, right? When, when, when. To begin with, you're giving the money to me and then I'm spending the money and then you pay me back. You don't really owe me anything to pay me back. So when HaKadosh Baruch Hu is paying the person that just helped the poor, he's giving you rebit. Right? It's, it's too much. That's called um, interest. And he shouldn't be allowed to pay interest. Just like we're not allowed to pay interest, Hashem is not allowed to pay interest either. So it goes kind of into like the halachot of Talmidei Chachamim. There are, there are some ways that Talmidei Chachamim together can pay each other very little interest. Very little in some circumstances. We won't even go into the halachic boundaries of that. But then he finishes off by saying like this. He says, I'll, I'll explain it to you. Um, I bring you a story from the Hafez Chaim. There's a story that's told about the Hafez Chaim. But some have also said that it's a, one of the different Gedolim. Either way, it was one of the tzaddikim of the last couple of generations, past generation. It says that one time the Chavetz Chaim was sitting and he was accepting people to come and get blessings and talk to him. And, and there was one person that was very, very involved in helping many organizations, many of which Chavetz Chaim was very involved in helping start these organizations. And this person was a big wealthy, wealthy man. He was an extremely wealthy man. He had his hand in it. Like he was always giving, which was great. So he wanted to have a chat with the Chafetz Chaim. So obviously such a person that helps so much, obviously gets his two minutes with the Chafetz Chaim. So he comes in the room, and it's said that he sat down with the Chafetz Chaim, and he said that, you know, I have a question. <clears throat> that, you know, you say that the Torah says that you have to keep the mitzvot, all of the mitzvot, Shabbat, Kashrut, and Ribit, and all of the above you have to keep in order for, for, obviously, in order for things to be well for you as a Jew. She says, yes. She says, I don't keep a thing. Nothing. Name it, I've eaten it, I eat it. Name it, I've done it. I mean, uh, Shabbat, Mu'adim, whatever. I don't keep nothing. Right? Nothing. 
But I have it all. Money, fame, I live comfortably, everything's good, right? So you tell me, you tell me now that you need, in order to have a good life or whatever, you have to keep the mitzvot. Why, why am I so comfortable? I don't know how this guy had the guts to even go there, you know what I mean? Like, why jinx it? <laughs> the fact that he wasn't afraid to get like, Ayn Hara, you know, if it was like, a, he was, you know, some people like act poor just to not get cheshed, you know? <laughs> Oh, yeah. He couldn't say, oh, they were the Chag. So, the Chavetz Chaim says, let me ask you something. You've, done, you've never done any mitzvah before in your life? He says, no. You've never, like, like never gone to a Bet Knesset? He says, me, when I was a kid, I vaguely remember when I was very, very young, my father took me to Bet Knesset, I think maybe once or twice. Hazak Baruch. So he says, do you know how to say the Shema? He goes, nope. He says, have you said the Shema before? He says, again, when I was a kid, my father repeated it with me. I remember once or maybe twice, I said the first passage of that, what you're saying, Shema. So the Chavetz Chaim looks at him and he says, you're getting the raw end of the deal, my friend. He says, what do you mean? He says, do you know how much that first, the fact that you just said that first pasuk, do you know how much that's worth? Infinite. All the money, all the fame, all the comfort you have in this world doesn't even compare to a sand, one speck of sand, compared to all the oceans. You still would not imagine what it means to have sakhar reward from HaKadosh Baruch Hu. So really, you're getting the raw end of the deal. Hashem's literally giving you everything here but you don't even know what everything is. This is nothing compared to what you're supposed to have for that one pasuk. But because of all the wrong you're doing, Hashem is saying, you know what? I'll just give you the reward here. And reward here can't be infinite. So He's giving you something limited here, which to you is infinite, but it's really not. You're really getting the wrong end of the deal. Zerah Shimshon says, for the, t- for the mitzvah of doing tzedakah, even though Hashem is paying you back when He doesn't really need to, and it's considered like He's giving you rebeat, considered like He's giving you uh, interest, it's not interest. It, it's, it doesn't even, it's not even a speck compared to what He should really give you, what you really deserve. He just gives you this money here as like a hazak baruch, good job. Your real reward is Billions of times greater. It's not even considered ribit when you consider how much he actually owes you as sakhar, as reward. The amount that he actually owes you as reward is so much bigger. Doesn't, Doesn't even translate. That's why the halakha goes that Talmidei Chachamim, today no one does this, but are allowed to loan, give each other interest, but very minute amount that it doesn't even count as interest. So he says, HaKadosh Baruch Hu also, what he's giving you back doesn't count as anything. Compared to what he really wants to give you, doesn't count as anything. Every time you shake the lulav, every time you light the Shabbat, every time you go and eat glad kosher food, when you have other options, every time you put your phone away on Shabbat, and Mu'adim, every time you choose not to get into that car, you have no idea what reward awaits us. You can't. You can't even imagine. All the riches of this world. I, I, I advise anyone that really wants to really dig deeper to read Mikhtav Meliyahu. It's in English also. Um, um, Mikhtav Meliyahu in English is translated. Um, it's called Strive for Truth, I believe. It's by Rav Eliyahu Dessler. He was a Genius, a brilliant mind, so much so that Mikhtav me Eliyahu, Mikhtav means writtens. Writtens of Eliyahu. Why is his book called Writtens of Eliyahu? Because he never intended to write a book. This entire book consists of letters that he wrote to people, either answering questions or writing letters when he was traveling abroad, writing letters to his family and his kids about Torah thoughts. 
Little did he know, it was such genius work that it's a book that is talked about worldwide all the time. From Rav, Mordechai, uh, Rav, Rav Eliyahu Dessler. Now, he has a chapter on reward and punishment. And he talks about what reward means. If you read this chapter, you will be amazed. So anytime you do a mitzvah and something good happens, trust me. That's nothing compared whatsoever to the tremendous amount of sakhar for every little mitzvah. Every tiny little mitzvah, there's no erech, there's no value you could possibly put on it. Nothing. You can't. It's impossible. This world is too physical, it's too limited for it to even be able to carry such reward for even one person. It's impossible. Therefore, HaKadosh Baruch Hu gives some reward here in order for us to be able to continue to do better. But the main sakhar is L'chaye Olam Haba. May we all be zocheh, to be able to do all of the mitzvot with all of our heart, all of our might, and be able to, um, to, be able to bask in the Shekhinah of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, and get the sakhar, the, the true reward, and be able to um, greet Moshiach Tzitkenu Bimhera Amenu Amen Baruch Adonai Le'olam Amen Amen